<咳>大会演讲即将开始。我们很荣幸邀请到 California Institute of Technology 侯义昭教授，让我们先邀请主持人台大数学系陈怡良教授为我们介绍。I should face. Yeah, right. Uh, I'm glad and honored to host this uh, uh, plenary talk given uh, Professor Hou Yizhao. Uh, professor Hou Yizhao is a chair professor of Caltech. Uh, go to the next page. Uh, here is a, a brief a briefing of his uh, his education and, and academic experience. From uh, 72 to 82, he he got a bachelor's degree from South South China University of Technology. I, I will mention this later. Okay, and then he moved to he go, he went to UCLA and got a PhD under supervision of Bjorn Enquist. Uh, then from 87 to 93, he uh, became a visiting professor, assistant professor, associate professor at Caltech. Then he moved to Caltech, a uh, uh, Quran Institute. Then he moved to Caltech from, 80, uh, from 1993, and then become a professor there uh, since 80, uh, uh, 98, and uh, a, prof, a chair professor uh, uh, from uh, 204. Uh, go to the next page. And <coughs> uh, I, I, I got uh, some information from Wiki. So if you are more interested in this, uh, his interest, uh, you can go to Wiki. But uh, uh, his main interest is numerical analysis, multi scale analysis, and the computation, multi phase flow, adapt, adaptive data analysis, and uh, the difficult problem. The, uh, all the equations and maybe a Stokes equ equations in 3D. And he got a, a numerous awards. Uh, at least some, you can get his uh, full list from Wiki. Uh, he is the first class of AMS fellow, uh, a fellow of uh, American Academy of Arts and Science, uh, first class of uh, science fellow, uh, 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 morning sign golden medal in a primate, primary speakers in the International Congress of uh, Industrial and a primate. Uh, and uh, in 98, he, he, he was the invited speaker in, at I, ICM and also the Feng Kang Awards uh, in 1907. <coughs> okay. Uh, 
I have an interview with him uh, in 2017 uh, 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 on the TWCM electronic newspaper. Uh, there's a link there. So I, I just uh, got the first page, this the first page here. Yeah. So let's go to the next slide. And the, the last word, he was the uh, son-in-law of Taiwan, his wife graduated from Freire University. Yeah. So the, this is uh, their picture. So it is my, yeah, so I'm very happy to uh, have him here. Uh, although it is remote, but it seems we are still here. <laughs> Okay, so let's welcome him. Thank you. Share screen. Okay, can everybody see my screen? Yes. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much uh, for the organizer for this, uh, uh, for this uh, national meeting from Taiwan Mathematical Society. And thanks, Ilan, for the very generous introduction. Uh, I, I usually visit Taiwan like uh, twice every year before that the pandemics. But during the pandemic, I've not been able to visit Taiwan for the past two years. I hope that I will be able to visit um, Taiwan again in the near future. So today, uh, I would like to speak to uh, this, this uh, work that has been working with various collaborators, uh, postdoc, graduate student in the past, uh, past few years, okay? Uh, so this is concerning the potential singularity of 3D incompressible Euler and an Navito equation. So this is a very well-known equation. So uh, this is the equation that we, we, we encounter this uh, fluid dynamic equation almost everywhere uh, in many application in every aspect of our life. So U is the uh, velocity field, it's a, a three, it's a vector velocity field, P is the pressure. So the flow incompressible is characterized by the flow being divergent free. And if you add a viscosity term that become now still equation without viscosity, that would be the 3D Euler equation. So this problem is no, known to be uh, extremely difficult because uh, uh, in three dimensional case, if you define the vorticity given by the curve of the velocity field, then this, uh, uh, this erection, this nonlinear term, erection term produce two terms. One is the transport of vorticity. One is the so-called water stretching term. And you can recover the velocity field from the vorticity through the, the Biot-Soar law. So gradient vorticity, gradient U, it is a, a risk transform, which is a, a, a zero, a risk operator of degree zero. It can be bounded from above and below by vorticity in any LP norm, or P strictly less than one, or greater than one less than infinity. So formally this scale like an omega square kind of nonlinearity, but due to the non-local nature, so it has been very difficult to express it, to establish a finite time singularity uh, because it could be a lot of can potential cancellation uh, due to this and local interaction. So for the Navistro equation so far, uh, the global regularity of this uh, 3D Navistro equation is only known for small data. Small data are either in this uh, L L3, LP norm, P greater than angle three, or in this uh, uh, product, right? This is a dimensionless uh, uh, scaling invariant. Uh, product that characterize the smallness compared to the visc viscosity. So there's a various kind of an unblock criteria that one of the well-known ones do the protein and serine. So they, they assume, if you can assume that the velocity field in LP norm in space and LQ in time, if P and Q set by this inequality, then you can exclude finite time singularity. So the special case P to three uh, only proved uh, much later in 2003 by Vladimir Swarik and his collaborator. And at the same time, there's a very well-known result by Kappa Valley Cone Nimber. Uh, there's a simplified proof by Fang Hualin, saying that for any uh, suitable weak solution of 3D Navistro equation uh, in this open set uh, in space-time, the one-dimensional house of pressure of the associated singularity set must be zero. So meaning that if you line up all the potential singularity point in space-time, so that the total dimension in space time is to be, to be strictly less than one. So, so far these, uh, the, the claim millennium problem associated with the Navistro equation is still open for large initial data. So, so we still do not know whether or not the uh, Navistro equation with a smooth initial data with finite energy would have a global regularity. So that's still one of the most challenging problems. 
So for the 3D oil equation without viscosity vaporization, more people believe the 3D oil equation may develop a finite time singularity. So there's a very well-known result due to Bill Cato Mida in 1984, saying that if, if, if the oil equation uh, ceases to be classical, then if and only if the vorticity had to blow up, moreover will have to blow up in this fashion. It's not integrable in time. So my early work was inspired by the work of uh, Constantine Pfeffer Maida in 1996, where they, they realized that the vorticity vector, you write, if you write the vorticity as a vorticity amplitude multiplied unit vector, so the direction of the vorticity vector, the regularity of the vorticity vector can potentially uh, decrease singularity, can, can eliminate singularity. So under there are two additional assumptions. So if you assume velocity does not blow up in the, in the region, that contain the, the, uh, the, the potential singularity, but, just, but the, the radio cannot collapse to zero, so we remain order one. And then also, this is the so-called regularity of the autistic vector, the geometric regularity. So it's this, the gradient of autistic vector uh, <coughs> has to be uh, integrable in time, L2 integral in time, so in, in this region, contain the maximum autistic. So my early work was uh, with uh, my former postdoc Chen Deng and my former PhD student Xin Wei Yu, trying to, to uh, modify this result so that it become more localized. So we, we adopted a Lagrangian perspective. So then we relax this condition by <coughs> only require the velocity field along a vortex line segment. Uh, it is integral in time. And so that's not required this to be bounded. And we place this condition by the condition that the local curvature along this water line filament and this second curvature uh, is integrable along the arc link, right? And moreover, we do not assume that this geometric regularity has to be true on, in order one region. We allow the arc length of this water line collapse to a point at the potential singularity of time capital T. So there was some very interesting result in 2019 by Terry Elgindi where he showed that the, uh, for 3D as a symmetric Euler equation, if you work with a very weak regularity class, ODC alpha initial vorticity with a very small alpha, he used alpha as a small parameter in his analysis. And, and more surprising is that there's no swore. So we know that for smooth initial data, 3D as a symmetric Euler equation without swore, then there's no water stretching. Then we know there's global regularity. But when you work with such a very weak regularity uh, vortice, initial vorticity, then he showed that for 3D Euler as a symmetric Euler without swore, uh, it can develop a finite time singularity. So at the same time, there's been a lot of uh, effort to people trying to look for numerical singularity for 3D Euler. This is a partial list of many people uh, working on, the, on this uh, uh, challenging problem. I would say that the, uh, the not, has not been very con conclusive because uh, at some point, people reported there's a singularity this for 3D as a symmetric Euler equation. And then later on, uh, Wei Nan Er and Xu Wang Shu, they, they, they're trying to reproduce a result using a, a better numerical method, then they find no evidence of, of finite time singularity. And there's a re result, very well known result reported by Bob Kerr in 1993 for two anti parallel waters tube. And then in 2006, together with uh, Professor Ro Li from Peking University, we're trying to reproduce his result using a, a very high order spectral method. We find only double exponential growth. We don't see the uh, uh, numerical evidence that there was a finite time singularity. So the reason the problem is so subtle is that, as I mentioned, look at the 3D oil equation. So this is a primary driving force. This is a nonlinear water stretching term, formally scaled like omega square. But there could be a lot of cancellation uh, due to this non-local uh, uh, nature of the gradient of U. So in fact, that there was a very, very nice Lagrangian uh, formulation for this uh, 3D oil equations given by this uh, very compact, uh, almost like a semi-explicit formula. So the vorticity along the characteristic for the, for the characteristic line is affected by the flow, by the velocity field, started at the position at alpha initially. Because the flow is divergent free, so this, uh, uh, this, uh, the Lagrangian flow map has to be very preserving. So the determinant of the Jacobi must be exactly the one. And then you can see the vortices is amplified along the Lagrangian trajectory by the deformation of this, uh, the gradient of the Jacobian, uh, of, the, of the flow map. But under the constraint that the volume has to be preserved, right? So that, that means that if you look at this uh, uh, initial data that by Bob Kerr's two anti-parallel waters two, 
it says it's a three-dimensional triple periodic boundary condition. So they up they, they rotate in the opposite direction. So this is isosurface of water is two. We make a small perturbation, they're t equals zero, c infinity initial data. And then at t equals six, you can see that they get flattening, they turn to attract to each other. Okay. And they're completely anti-symmetric respect to the XY plane. So this is upper half of the plane by t equals 17, t equals 17. You can see they get very flattening, almost like a water sheet. But then you, you can see the water sheet roll up towards the end. The maximum is achievable here in this water tube. But the water line, this is the water line direction, mortis vector. You can see they're almost pointing in along one dimensional direction. So that, in some sense, uh, the, the, the local geometric condition that we, we specify over here seems to satisfy, right? The curvature seems to be uh, not too large. This is the second curvature. So then that's why I, I try to, to reproduce bulk curves without guided by this new non-block criteria. This is computation with uh, Professor Ro Lee. So this computation actually generates a lot of interest. And we, moreover, we monitor how fast the water stretching grow as a function of time. So at the point of vorticity achieve the maximum, we want to measure what's the degree of nonlinearity of this water stretching term. Then we found actually can bound it by omega times log omega, which is a very weak nonlinearity, right? So if we blow out like omega square, then it will be this top curve. But we have the new, we have the all the numerical data. We compute it up to t to seven nineteen, t to nineteen, which is beyond the time that predicted by Bob Kerr. He said that eighteen point seven is the time that it should blow up. So we see no evidence. We get this almost linear uh, growth, and because of the lock factor, so the maximum testing can grow e to the e to the e, double exponential growth. So sure enough, you can take the double log of the maximum motility as a function of time. You can see it does not grow faster than linear, right? So that again shows that it's a very subtle business that when you're trying to detect a potential singularity, especially by numerical computation, then you have to be extremely careful to make sure that you're not under resolved and have to capture the, all the potential cancellation of nonlinearity. So then back to 2014, yeah, so my former post of Guo Law and I uh, published a, a result in, in which we identify a new potential blobs uh, scenario. So this is for the 3D asymmetric Euler equation in a cylindrical domain, which is driven by last uh, small, the angular velocity field is not zero, but the other two velocity field is zero initially, right? So this is very different from uh, Helginde's result where you have no small, meaning that U theta is zero, right? Completely driven by by the, the uh, other component of the velocity field. So, so this is the geometry of the our problem, the setting. So it's purely in Z direction, in the vertical direction. There's a boundary R, R to one, this is a no flow boundary condition, okay? So the top flow swelling downward and the bottom slow swelling upward in an anti-symmetric fashion along the Z direction. So then the, 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 the potential singularity occur at the boundary R to one at Z to zero. So this is a stagnation point. So the flow does not move at this corner, right? So you can see, so this is the, the amplitude of the uh, autistic absolute value at very close to the finite time, at the, the near the blow up time. You can see that it look like it want to develop a delta function like a singularity, at r equal one, z equal zero. <coughs> this is in the physical domain as a function of r and z. But in order to resolve such a, a potential singular solution, we, we, we design a, a adaptive mesh that transforms the domain r into rho and z into eta through a tensor product mesh that we designed that transformation analytically. So you can see that we can, we can unfold the singularity from the physical domain into this uh, transform domain, rho and eta. Rho is the r direction, eta is the z direction. Through this uh, new transform map, mapping as a monotone and linear mapping, you can see that the vorticity absolute value become much more regular. The, 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 the function is very smooth with respect to rho and eta, although the amplitude is very large. So we perform all our con computation in the rho and eta domain. Because the singularity occur at the stagnation point at r equal to one is equal to zero, so the singularity does not move in time. So it's very easy, very effective, this adaptive mesh. So if you take a uniform mesh in the rho and eta domain, then you map back to the physical domain r and z, so you can achieve local maximum resolutions about 10 to the power 
12 along each di direction. So it is imp almost impossible if you're trying to even using the largest computer available, if you do not use this kind of special adaptive mesh refinement tailored to this, the nature of this singularity, you cannot possibly achieve such a high resolution to, to resolve this singularity. So then we're trying to fit what is the growth rate, maximum morticity as a function of time, trying to check against the Buchanan Mitre uh, blow up criteria. So then we found that actually it blow up, blow up like a, a capital T minus T to some negative exponent, which is 2.4579. So this is certainly not integral in time, right? In fact, we, are, we, are, we use two different ways to do a linear regression. One is the log of maximum morticity time due to inverse, which is linear in time. When there's a log of a maximum morticity is linear with respect to log time. We can do two different ways to do linear regression. You can fit this constant, the exponent gamma, the block, block time, and also the constant right, in front of this uh, scaling, uh, block scaling. So you can see that through different, two different methods as we refine the mesh, this exponent converge to, to like three digit accuracy. Right? So, so, so that gives a very convincing uh, uh, Evident. Moreover, we can push the computation very close to the time. So this is the time that we stop our computation. We still obtain sufficient accuracy. But the predicted singularity time is at this time. This, this time where we stop the computation uh, and where we, the predicted singularity time agree up to seven digit accuracy. Or the previous numerical method, they have an order one gap between the time they stop the computation, they can trust their computation and the time they predict is the future singularity which is very, very different. And in the same paper, we also propose a one-dimensional model we call uh, HL model. So if you, you let omega theta, this is the vorticity defined as omega, and you define it like a density equal to u theta square, and u is the velocity field along the z direction, then you get the exact uh, equation along r equal to one on the boundary. It's like a 1D business approximation. In order to close the system, we need a, a modified Biosawa law, if you assume that the vorticity does not change much, that's remain a constant as a function of r, you can integrate from r to one all the way to r to minus infinity, you can get this uh, closure. This is use of z to Hilbert transform of vorticity. But that completely closes the system. So together with uh, Kislev and, and Swarik and his four, two former postdocs, Choi and Yao Yao, we, we actually be able to prove uh, that this is only model developed by the time singularity. So uh, at the time, so I, I was working with my former PhD student, Peng Fei Liu, we're trying to see whether or not we can actually prove since the, the, the blow up that identified by Bolo and myself seems to be very robust, very easy to reproduce. And you, you get a very convincing self-similar blow up. So we're trying to prove vigorously whether or not such a, uh, to, whether or not we can justify such a blow up vigorously. So we, after uh, looking for many different uh, potential uh, formulation to, 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 to give rise to finite time singularity, we decided to use a dynamic rescaling formulation, which is I first learned when I was a postdoc at the Quran Institute. So the idea is they trying to compute a potential uh, cell similar blob of an amine PDE, but we scale the physical solution in, in space and also in time, we put it in a damping introduce a scale time, okay? There's a three scaling parameter here. So the CL, CL uh, parameter are trying to, because in the physical domain, they're trying to develop focusing singularity. So you're trying to, to, to uh, stretch the support so that you have a finite support as the we scale time goes to infinity. And then the omega will tend to blow up at, at a singularity time. You're trying to maintain there's a fi finite amplitude profile. We introduce a damping term. So C omega is like a negative. Right? So, so that you rescale the amplitude to be order one, satisfy some normalization condition. So these three parameter has to satisfy a linear relationship in order to be equivalent to the original physical uh, equation. So this is a 2D Bustan's equation. Right? I, I use it as a, a illustration. So this is, a, uh, so as if, if you can show that as tau to infinity, this uh, rescale equation converts to an untrivial steady state. So after proper rescaling, that, that steady state will become a give rise to a cell similar profile, right? So that gives you a lot of information, right? So, so, so when we talk about uh, a potential stable blow up, it's, it's very important to use the correct 
the appropriate formulation to study the stability of a potential block. If you're trying to, to try to linearize around the original physical, like a 2D Busnet or 3D all equation around a potential blob solution, then it is generically the perturbation will be unstable because you linearize around a potential singular solution, right? But here we're trying to linearize around a, a, a potential cell similar profile, which is a smooth profile, right? Then we expect that if you have a stable blob, small initial perturbation will not change the, the, the cell similar profile too much, right? And the singularity time should also very close to the unperturbed singularity time. So this is the, the right way to do uh, to, to, to stability of a potential blob solution. So, so this let me outline the, the, the strategy that we have in mind. So you omega is a vorticity rose density, this is the two, two quantity that we have dynamic equation. So this is a dynamic scaling equation. We put all the right hand side into this uh, uh, F of V, right? It's non local, non linear, right hand side. So, of course, we do not know whether or not such a, a, a non linear, non local PDE have a, a non trivial steady state. We do not know, right? I mean, that's what you're trying to prove. So, but numerically, you can solve this equation. It turns out to be very robust, very efficient. You're using a, a, a high order numerical discretization because the profile remains smooth after the, the normalization. So, then you you can resolve the pro approximate steady state very accurately, like the, the residual is small as small, like a 10 to the minus eight. So then you can, using numerical computation, you can construct the approximate uh, cell similar profile we call V-bar. And then you interpolate to the whole, 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 whole plane, right, from the grid point of the whole plane. Then you can, you can check post posteriori that there's a small residual we call epsilon. It's something you can, we can control, depends on our computational resources. So then you have a candidate solution is a approximate cell similar profile, right? We do not need the exact cell similar profile, which is hard to obtain, right? But approximate cell similar profile, we can compute very accurately. So now the remaining task is construct a perturbation, retutor, right? This is a theoretical analysis part. So that the sum of the two give you the exact solution of the dynamic rescaling formulation. You substitute this into the dynamic rescaling equation. Then you linearize around the V bar, the approximate steady state, because we expect the perturbation to be small because the residuals is small, right? So then you get a linearized equation around V bar. There's a quadratic nonlinearity because the, the nonlinear term in the abraction, convection, and also water stretching is quadratic. So you have a quadrat only quadratic nonlinear term, you don't have high order term. And then the residual enter here. So this is exact. So you get the equation for the, the V tutor. So now the, the whole strategy is to, to try to establish. If you put, if you're assuming that using a bootstrap argument, the perturbation is small, suppose V tilde are small. So these quadratic terms are smaller compared to the, the linearized term. Epsilon is small, so you're supposed to ignore these two terms. So you're trying to analyze whether or not we have the linear stability for the uh, perturbation around the approximate steady state. Linear stability means that uh, you have a attractor, meaning that if you look at this, uh, uh, this uh, semi group operator for the linearized operator, so, so physically, intuitively speaking, the, all the eigenvalue of the spectrum should have a negative real part, right? you have some damping effect, right? So if you, if you can show that under some weighted energy norm, that there was a positive lambda here, which is somehow matched the spectral gap for, between the linearized operator and the, to the imaginary axis. So then you, have, you know, have a stability of the linearized profile. So that, this is the most difficult part of the analysis. You need to design some singular weighted sublift norm to show that in, in this uh, uh, radiant energy norm, uh, radiant H1 norm, that you can obtain a damping effect, right? There's a damping, there's a linear stability. The once you have that, then you can, you can write down the uh, equation for the perturbation using a, a Duhamel principle, right? Formally, right, the Duhamel principle, right? So then you, you, under the same norm, you can also show that there was a, a linear stability. So this uh, quadratic term can be bounded by the perturbation square up to uh, some constant. Then you can actually get the, the bound for the perturbation uh, in terms of this uh, uh, ground wall inequality, the uh, integral form the ground wall inequality. Because you have a linear stability, so it is this, this linearized operator give you damping. So you can show that as long as the perturbation initially are trapped in a small energy ball of radio A, A has to satisfy this inequality. 
So as long as A is of all, all the epsilon, epsilon is a residue that we computed for, the, for our approximate steady state V bar, then this will be, uh, then this will be satisfied. Then we can show that the uh, perturbation can never escape this energy ball, right? You use a booster argument. Suppose from T to zero up to some type tau, strictly less than tau, that this is satisfied. The perturbation will stay inside this energy ball. Then you can show that up to this time tau, the perturbation also strict, lies strictly inside this energy ball. So then you can show that this perturbation will be true. So we will be staying in this energy ball for all time. Since you have a non-trivial steady state to start it with, right, this perturbation can be, can, be, can, be, can be controlled to be small for all time. So the, that, that, that by itself already enough to prove that the, uh, the, the, the dynamic scaling solution, we have a non-trivial uh, uh, profile as tau good infinity. When you map back to the physical space, uh, assuming that the C omega remain negative, right, because there's the damping factor, there's a boundary of, uh, above by a negative number, then you can show that when you map back to the physical space, the physical time become finite time because this is remain negative for all time. You know, when you scale back to the physical time, but that's already sufficient to establish the original 2D business equation develop finite time singularity. But moreover, you can also uh, take one step further by differentiate the perturbation in time because the epsilon, it is time independent, right? But differentiate in time, you can get the a time duty of the perturbation. So then you can, Q this uh, residual term. Then you can actually show that the, uh, using the a priori estimate that we established here, then you can actually show that the, uh, uh, the original uh, dynamic scaling equation actually will converge to a, a exact steady state, right? So we start with approximate steady state, but then using this a priori estimate and plus the fact that we have a stability for the linearized operator, you can further show that the dynamic scaling equation is tau good infinity we converge to an exact steady state. We will not be V bar because V bar is a approximate steady state. So then we can prove that there exists an exact steady state if epsilon equals zero, if it has no, no residue, right? So then, then you can actually show that the, uh, uh, as tau code infinity, the, uh, the solution, the physical solution will converge to an exact steady state asymptotically. In fact, they converge exponentially fast, right? Because you have this, this uh, damping effect. So this is our whole uh, machinery, but it's very, uh, uh, very technical. So we have written three paper uh, using this framework that I just described. So for the one dimensional De Gregory model, which is a generalization of the Constantine less Maida model, but the, where he added a, a Russian term, because it's well known that the Russian and the water structure has a strong cancellation, right? So we can actually prove in this, this paper published by CPAM in 2011, that we prove that if you work on this equation on the real line and the whole real line, there was a finite time singularity, self-similar singularity, which is quite surprising because for when people are trying to solve this on a circle uh, using periodic automation, people seem to, to conclude that there was conjecture that should be global regularity due to the strong cancellation between the erection term and the discussion term. So inspired by the work of uh, uh, Terry Algindi, so we also trying to uh, extend his uh, technique to including the this to include the situation that Goloy and I consider that with a, a, a potential singularity at the boundary R to one, but driven by large small, right? Large U theta. So we have, we proved that for 2D Poisson equation and 3D all equation with C1 alpha initial data, initial velocity field with of finite energy and boundary, it would develop a sometimes self-similar block in finite time. So this paper published last year with my student Jia Jie Chen. Uh, and, and, and in, communi in communication mathematical physics. Okay, this is uh, with Jia Chen and Huang De. Huang De, he finished uh, uh, his PhD in 2020, and then he, he got the, he become a professor, assistant professor at Peking University uh, last year. And then we, our ultimate goal is to generate this whole machinery to uh, establish this finite time singularity of the 3D as a symmetric Euler equation or 2D Bustin's equation for smooth initial data, not only for weak regular initial data. So we, we as an intermediate step, we, we, public, we post a paper, uh, archive paper, again with Jia Jie Chen and Huang De uh, last year, that for the 1D HL model, the, the, the how law model, that, uh, we showed that for smooth initial data with compact support, that we, 
it developed as some taunting, they focus themselves in the void in finite time. So with Jia Chen, we now, if you are very close to, to generalize this technique to actually, to prove the, the, the two Dipusnet's equation with moon initial data seem to develop a finite time singularity. Yeah, so that's very encouraging. In the remaining part of the talk, I would like to report some recent progress that I, I uh, have made because the, all the single, single singularity scenario that I've reported up to now is based on the whole law scenario, which is uh, the presence of the boundary and the symmetry condition along the Z direction play a very essential role. So, uh, however, that singularity uh, does not survive the, the viscous, viscous regularization because by the Kaffee Valley Cone Nuremberg uh, partial regularity theory, for the asymmetric 3D Euler equation, a 3D Navier's equation, any potential singularity must occur in the symmetry axis i r to zero. Okay, because otherwise, if a singularity occurs at r not to zero, then in the, in the singularity set in space alone already a uh, one-dimensional circle, so that already dimension is uh, equal to one, right? So the, but the Kaffee-Valley Kaffee cone numeral results say that the space-time singularity set, the dimension has, the house of a dimension have, must be strictly less than one. So, so that, that's to R to zero, the symmetry axis is the only place that you can uh, allow this as potential singularity for 3D now still equation, as a symmetric 3D now still equation. So, so for, for the past few years, I put a lot of effort to see if we can find a, another scenario, a blob scenario, in the interior domain, not, not depend on the boundary, right? That turns out to be extremely difficult because uh, there's a lot of potential cancellation. So the, the equation, oil equation, somehow does not want to blow up. It should always find a way to escape the similarity. But very recently we found a very, quite a promising new set of initial data that seems to uh, uh, develop a similarity at the, R, at the origin, at R to zero for 3D as a symmetric Euler. Uh, and also nearly similar behavior for 3D now still equation. So let me uh, introduce this uh, as a symmetric 3D now still equation again. So let me introduce this uh, U1 variable. So U theta is the angular velocity field, omega theta is the angular vorticity, this is the angular stream function. Uh, by the uh, uh, result by uh, uh, Liu Jiangu and Wang Weicheng, so they, they, they realized that for as a symmetric 3D Euler now still equation, the U theta, omega theta, and psi theta must be an off function of R in order to be smooth function in the Cartesian coordinate. So, if we, so, so in, in, uh, to, in my paper with uh, uh, Kong Ming Li in, in, in 1908, uh, 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 so we introduced this new set of change variable. So then we can reformulate the asymmetric 3D now equation in terms of this uh, new variable, so that we remove this uh, uh, cylindrical singularity on the R from the equation. So then we find a very simple initial data. So this in these two papers that uh, actually this uh, this uh, is a single author paper that we posted last July, and then we just completely driven by last rule. So it's against periodic in z direction, it's an R function in z, right? And 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 it is uh, uh, only then the true velocity field is the, the angular velocity field. The other two velocity field is zero. It's very, very, very simple structure. But the important thing is that this is different from the, my earlier work with Huang De. Uh, I posted another paper earlier that developed a two scale singularity, Charlie singularity. So, so where the, uh, uh, yeah, so the, that two scale singularity uh, also occur at the i equals zero, the singularity, but, but that does not survive the viscous regularization because it's a two scale. The small scale, it does not compatible with the non still scaling. It's like, as, uh, it's a linear respect to capital T minus T. The non still uh, scaling should be square root of capital T minus T. Right? That's the only scale. That's, that the water stretching and viscous term are compatible. So for the two scale uh, scenario that we, we found that the, uh, the maximum vorticity only grow by less than a factor of two with, with uh, this, this constant viscosity. But here, I, as I'm going to show you that for this new initial data, uh, we can get the 10 to the power seven amplification in maximum vorticity. So let me talk about Euler equation with the driving mechanism is the Euler, Euler blow. So, so because the, the, although initial condition is uh, omega theta equals zero, but through the, the uh, uh, coupling in the, the omega one equation to the U one equation, remember omega one coupled to uh, U one. 
So the, the last war initially, we introduced an angular autistic, right? That is a source term here, right? So you introduce a, a dipole, what, what has dipole in the omega theta direction, right? Omega theta variable, right? So these two dipoles generate a, a negative radial velocity field that push towards the symmetry axis. This is the R axis, this is the Z axis, right? So this is a, a hyperbolic flow, right? So then it, it, you cannot penetrate through R zero, so the flow has to go up and then turn here. So this is, so the singularity is, is right at the origin, right? So there's a very strong alignment. So in terms of U1 omega one equation, let me remind you for the Euler equation. So this is a linear term, this is a water stretching term. So U1 plus Poseidon sub Z, uh, same order, same scaling as U1, right? So this is Poseidon sub Z is a red color. The U1, it is uh, uh, the angular velocity divided by R, right? So this is a blue color. So the, these two are the same order, right? So that's, that's show you this term is formally scaled like a U1 square. Moreover, you can see that at argue zero, so U1 percentage of C remain pretty much flat here. So that's why it leads to very rapid growth into introducing a trolling wave that, that push toward argue zero. And then be, behind the maximum position of U1, percentage of C become negative. So they push down this. So that's why it push down and they push up here. That's why it generates a trolling wave, right? The same thing for this, the, the Z direction. This is the, the cross section in the R, R direction. This cross section in the Z direction. Right. So the Z direction, the, the flow trying to push the, 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 the maximum U1 away from Z0 because they have to turn around, right? They cannot go through this wall, R0, right? But then the, 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 the water stretch in turn again, play the role. So perseverance of Z have the maximum as Z0. So it always lift up the path between the maximum U1 and Z0, right? And then it become negative, become monotone decreasing, it become negative behind the maximum U1 position along the Z direction. So again, we push this flow, the solution U1 behind maximum U1 position, push down and then push up here. So again, it generally a traveling way that somehow overcome the erection, the erection turn trying to push away, but there's a competition between the erection trying to destroy the singularity and the water stretching trying to pull the singularity towards the origin. So that somehow the linearity win. So that's why it took maximum autistic to travel toward the origin. So that's a very important mechanism, right? Along the R direction, in, the, in addition that the, uh, uh, the water stretching turn trying to push the radial direction towards the R zero, so, but the flow also have a negative flow that push this uh, flow towards R zero, right? So we have a very favorable geometry. So you can see that the maximum U1, omega one and maximum T C have a very rapid growth. So we take a double log, to make sure that it does not grow only double exponential growth, we see that they indeed grow much faster than double exponential growth. So we want to see how much vorticity get amplified dynamically. So this for Euler equation without viscosity, we get a factor of more than 5,000 amplification, which is very, has not been observed before for the interior domain. It's very hard to get a growth of muscle vorticity. We also check against the time integral of muscle vorticity as a function of time. If you look at the minor criteria, you can see that also seems to develop a finite time similarity. But this is what, what it looks like in the physical domain. The U1 looks like a developed singularity at the origin, like a delta function singularity. But since we, 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 we saw everything in the transform rho and eta domain, so the solution become very smooth in the transform domain. So that's where we solved on the macro solution in the rho and eta domain. And then we do the, the very careful numerical convergence study. So the error, like the maximum TC, converge more than second order accurate, right? And then we try to put, put the scaling analysis for maximum autistic, how much maximum autistic grow, how much the maximum velocity grow. So we found that maximum autistic grow like one over T, maximum velocity grow like one over square root capital T minus T, right? And moreover, the, the Z square, the Z is the, the smallest link scale because this is the center maximum U1 located at this R and Z location. So they both scale like a square root capital T minus T, which is compatible with the now still scaling. This is the only term, only scaling that now still and water stretching become, they balance each other, right? So this is very encouraging. We get a one scale kind of blow up and which is compatible with the now still blow up. Moreover, it looks like a cell similar. So this is the U1 contour in the physical domain. But if you do a, a rescale through this uh, rescaling variable, push the origin, shift the origin to capital R and zero. 
and then divide by z t, z it is a small length scale, you can see that you get almost like a steady uh, cell similar profile in u1. So given the fact that we obtain a, a very a promising potential singularity for 3D all equation that have a scaling compatible with the Nernst equation, so we are very curious to see whether or not Nernst equation, whether or not it may, it may also develop a, a singular behavior if you ever discuss it, right? Or the previous attempt, right? If you ever discuss it, finite viscosity, that it will kill all the potential order singularity. So, but here we, to our surprise, that we add a very large viscosity. So, so like a five times 10 to the minus four for an initial stage, and then switch to even larger, five times 10 to the minus three after this initial time, right? So we find that the, the large viscosity somehow tend to stabilize the, the, the shearing, uh, the, the, the strong shearing, the Euler, potential Euler singularity. Again, the dipole structure is maintained, but we, now we can compute much longer in time because the viscous effect smooth out the sharp front. And you get a very strong time, uh, uh, very strong uh, duration of the nonlinear water stretching alignment. Percentage of Z over U1, remember I told you earlier, emphasize this is really the driving force, right? So this really scale like a U1 square for a very long time, right? It's almost the same order, maximum U1 location, perseverance of Z had the same order, stay like a flat, right? The very late, the late, the very late stage remain the same quadratic form. And, and, and in the viscosity term, we also monitor what's the relative strain of viscosity compared to water stretching. It turns out that this always win throughout our, the duration of our computation. So that's why you get such a very rapid growth. So you can U1 maximum U1, omega one, maximum autistic growth, tremendously fast. We, we can, because of viscous regularization, we can go much further beyond the Euler singularity. And what's surprising is the maximum autistic compared to the initial maximum autistic increased by 10 to power seven, which is, has never been reported before, such a huge amplification. And you can also check against the buchet Mida criteria that also seems to have a very rapid growth. And this is a tornado type of singularity. So you can see that, they, uh, that this is streamlined, 3D streamlined, uh, at different locations, start, different starting point. And then near the center of the tornado, you can see that it's no much spinning, then they go up. And then there's a circulation zoom that the, it does not it keep the, the bulk of the fluid near this uh, circulation zone without being corrected away. So that supplies enough energy to push the flow towards the, the origin. So again, in the physical domain, you look like this, you get a singularity, like a delta function singularity. Now we can compute much closer to the origin, like a 10 to the power minus five distant from the origin. And this is the transform domain. In terms of row and data, you can get a very smooth profile, right? Again, we do the same kind of convergence study. Uh, for, and and the, the, the scaling, and not, only, not only we can now compute much longer in time, but you can see the maximum velocity, maximum velocity field also scale a sim, uh, give us similar, similar scaling as the what we observe for the two, 3D oil equation, right? And, and also the z square, the, the smallest link scale, also scale like a square root, capital T minus T, for the majority of the time, except for the very late stage, we, we see a very mild two scale single, uh, structure that has a log correction. So meaning that's sl slightly smaller than square root capital T minus T. So that could potentially lead to viscous dominate if this persists, right? But majority of the time it is a completely now still scale. And also cell similar uh, in the same way that we checked that the, uh, if you in the physical space, you can see that, that the solution U1 profile shrink after you properly rescale, you, you look like you get a steady profile. And the pressure also go to minus infinity is one of the criteria people say that for now still creating the blob, the pressure has to go to minus infinity. Indeed, we, we see that it go to minus infinity uh, like one over capital T minus T. Yeah, we also check the entropy growth. So this is another interesting quantity. So we so if this quantity can be controlled, then there's no, no blob, right? And also there's an, uh, the result I mentioned earlier for the spheric, if the L3 norm control of the velocity field, that's another very important criteria to check the blob. So the entropy, we can see that it, it still have a very rapid growth. So even this quantity integrated to the power uh, L2 norm to the power four integrated in time, you still see the very rapid growth. But however, we're very careful checking towards the final time by zooming the final time, you see the growth seems to slow down. 
and the maximum uh, the, the the L3 norm, the velocity also seems to to kind of saturate towards the end. So that gives some a strong indication that maybe the three D now still equation for the initial data we consider may just barely escape the, the singularity. But on the other hand, now recently we see the referee report that it, one of the analysts say that, well, maybe not so fast to make this conclusion because the, the recent paper by Terry Tao showing that uh, this quantity just need to grow like a triple lock, capital T minus T to some, some power. Uh, that would be enough to, to have a blow up. So, so even though I can see this uh, L3 norm seem to grow very slowly, may, may, may saturate, but I say that you need further, you have to compute much closer to the potential simulated time in order to make that conclusion. So my time is almost up. So I, I, I think I will skip this last part. So where, we, where I try to, to modify the viscosity so, so, so that it adapt to the solution have a slow decay, then you can push the computation much further. You can get the uh, maximum autistic growth by 10 to the power nine. So, so that's also very interesting by itself. Okay. To, to summarize, uh, so I present a new class of initial data that lead to potential singularity 3 d symmetric Euler at the origin. And a very important feature of this uh, new uh, block scenario is that the scaling properties are compatible with those of the 3 d still equation. Then we demonstrate that uh, for the 3 d still equation using the same initial data, if a relatively large viscosity, then the maximum autistic can amplify a factor 10 to the power seven, right? But however, we, we found that there's a, very, there's a mild two scale structure like a log correction to it in the late stage. That could, that, that, that could be several reasons leading to that because in the late stage, you have to adaptively refine the mesh more frequently. So that could also introduce some numerical damping. So, so that's something I, we are trying to investigate further. And, 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 uh, and then we, at the last part, you don't have time to talk about. So we showed that if you allow the viscosity to go to zero very slowly, like a log, capital T minus T to minus three, then that seems to maintain the balance between the water stretching and, and the uh, viscosity term. So that with a, a slowly decaying viscosity coefficient, and our still equation seems to develop a finite time singularity. So these are some of the references that I, you are welcome to look at it. With that, I stop. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. Questions? Page 17, you have a plot point 2.45 and something. Do you have any interpretation in the geometric or analytically? What, what page? Um, 17? Um, on, yeah, on page 17, you have a broad, broad exponent, 2.45 and something. Do you, have, do you have any interpretation of it, either geometric or analytic? Uh, we have some interpretation uh, that due to the pole singularity, we have some formal analysis for the Hubert transform, the 1D model. I think it has something to do with the pole structure. It has to, the, we, we actually uh, believe this, this number should be very close to three. I mean, on the, 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 sorry, the, the CL, the, the, there was an exponent. So this number can be, uh, uh, can be there was some kind of uh, geometric interpretation due to this, the singularity in the complex domain. There's some, some kind of pole structure, you have to do some kind of uh, multiple expansion. And, and that turns out to have to be some fractional power. Uh, uh, we, we have some preliminary analysis to, to, to show that, that that seems to, uh, to, to be a, a, a possible explanation, but we, we cannot, uh, we do not have a real understanding yet. Yeah. But, but this, uh, it, it has something to do with this uh, uh, in the dynamic scaling formulation that there was a, uh, there's an exponent CL here. This CL seems, seems to converge to, to three. And then 2.9 something, 2.93 something in the numerical computation. But looks like a, that cost one into or some kind of post singularity cost one into CL to three uh, integer, but there's some higher order correction. So, so there's some kind of explanation that you can justify this, but right now it is a very formal level. Yeah. Okay. So, any further question? One more. Okay. So, due to the time, so let's thank Professor 
Tom Ho, okay? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, 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 Thank you,